Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And in this particular video, we're going to be talking about trigonometry. And the specific question is the following. We want to go ahead and estimate the value of sine 185 degrees. And I'm looking for just a real kind of reasonable number, certainly not a perfect estimate, just a value that is reasonable. Now, because we are talking about estimating this value, I don't want you to use your calculator. Now, if you are uh, studying trigonometry in like a full uh, way, not just kind of like basic trigonometry. Uh, so we're kind of talking about those students that might be taking like pre-calculus, uh, cause uh, generally in pre-calculus you take well, maybe like a third of the course uh, is uh, trigonometry, kind of advanced trigonometry. So if you're at this level, this is certainly a question you should be able to answer rather easily. So if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your estimate into the comment section. I'm going to show you my number here in just one second, and then I'm going to show you how easy it is to do this problem. Also, if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look uh, at the answer. We are talking about the sine of 185 degrees. Just want some basic reasonable number, but let me go ahead and show you the actual answer. Now, here, if you uh, use your calculator, you're going to get negative 0.087. Now, you might be saying, hey, that's not fair. You said don't use your calculator, but you used your calculator. Well, listen, I just want to show you the uh, actual answer. Now, I did kind of round off. So basically, what I'm looking for is any number, okay, any value that is negative. So if your estimate is negative, and it is a uh, very close to zero. It's a very, very small negative number. Matter of fact, let's make this the correct answer. Negative, and we'll make it a very, very small number. Okay, so you'll have to be the judge whether in fact uh, you did this correctly. If you have a positive value, well, uh, then that is an indication that you you know, really didn't understand how to do this. But if you have a, a very small negative value, that is a good sign that in fact you understand this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus, A 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you can estimate trigonometric values. And how did you est uh, estimate this value? Well, the easiest way to um, estimate trigonometric values is to use their graphs, okay? So now before I show you the actual answer here, or the best kind of approach to, uh, to do this, in mathematics, especially in algebra and trigonometry, there's various functions that you really need to really master and understand the respective graphs, okay? It's graphs, uh, functions are tremendously important. Okay, so you know knowing how to graph something, but knowing like the graphs, let's say a basic logarithmic uh, graph um, or exponential functions, those graphs certainly sine, cosine, tangent graphs. This is you know like an absolutely must-know type of skills at this level of math. We're talking like the algebra two, college algebra, certainly pre-calculus level. So the kind of uh, secret to do this problem, it's not really a secret, it is just the best way, is to look at the graph of sine. Now, hopefully you know the basic graph um, of uh, the sine function, okay? You certainly should know this, cosine and tangent and much, much more. Matter of fact, it gets pretty interesting on how to graph um, uh, kind of uh, more challenging problems with trigonometric functions. You can get into secant, cosecant, cotangent graphs. Yeah, they're quite involved. If you are taking trigonometry, you know exactly what you mean, or what I mean, excuse me. Uh, by the way, if you need help with this, if you're already kind of like, ah, kind of lost, uh, check out my pre-calculus course, because that's where you'll find my full trigonometry, my advanced trigonometry. I have, uh, I believe, four chapters of trigonometry, advanced stuff in there that can help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So we want to uh, figure out what the um, a value, a reasonable estimate would be for sine 185 degrees. So we'll get to that in one second, but let's just uh, take a look at the basic sine function graph, okay? Now sine, cosine, and tangent 
these functions are called periodic functions, which means they just continue on and on and on. So this would be one period of the sine graph. It just continues on and on and on. So this would be kind of the, uh, the uh, pattern of sine and cosine, right? So they're very similar, just depends on um, sine starts at zero and cosine starts at one, all right? So here, let me kind of just erase this part right here. So sine, uh, we're gonna take a look uh, at one period again. It goes from zero to 360 degrees. So again, here is a circle. You start at zero, you go all the way around to 360 degrees, and you got all these angles, right, that are producing various values. So this is the graph of all those values, okay? So I don't wanna go too deep into this uh, because uh, you know this, this warrants kind of a full, complete instruction, all right? Again, if you need help with graphing, uh, sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, secant, all that kind of stuff, check out my pre-calc course. Uh, all right, so let's kind of get into this right here. So here is the sine graph, one period, right? So you start at zero degrees, and here uh, uh, we're gonna kind of just um, look at uh, this graph as it goes around the circle, right? So we're going to start at zero degrees. We're going to go to 90 degrees. We're going to go to 180 degrees. And then you have 270 degrees, whoop, 270 degrees right here. And then it ends at 360 degrees, right? So as this angle goes around, here are the various values that are going to be produced. So at zero, the sine of zero degrees is zero, okay? Now, as the graph goes up, the sine of 90 degrees, okay, is positive one. All right, so here's one right here. So this is what we call the amplitude, okay? This graph is gonna be bouncing between one and negative one. So at 90 degrees, the value of sine, okay, if you went into your calculator and went sine of 90 degrees, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, you'll see that the answer is one. Okay, so now the values start coming down right here, and then at sine 180 degrees, we're back down to zero, okay? Now, as we uh, continue past 180, what happens between 180 and 270? Well, we're getting negative right here, right? And at 270 degrees, the sine of 270 degrees is negative one, and then uh, here from 270 to 360, it's negative, but it's it approaching right back up to zero, so sine, of 360 is zero. Okay, so hopefully I did a uh, halfway decent job kind of explaining this. Again, if you're kind of confused about this, um, you know, you'll kind of really want to check out like my full instruction, but hopefully, you know, you're kind of getting the main idea here. All right, so we want to use the graph to understand the values of what's going on here. All right, so now let's get to the question. If we want to estimate the sine of 185 degrees, we want to locate uh, where 185 degrees is on the graph. So here is zero, I mean, sorry, 180 degrees, I'm sorry. So the sine of 180 degrees, let's put this right here, is what? Well, it is equal to zero, okay? So you can see uh, it maxes out here at positive one at 90, and then it's coming down. 180 or at zero. So the question is 185. So 185 degrees is the what? It's like right here, right? So this is like 185 degrees. So its respective value is like right here. It's slightly negative. Okay. Very, very small negative value. So any small negative value, not obviously uh, close to negative one, you know, closer to zero would be a reasonable estimate. Okay, so likewise, you know, we kind of uh, play around with this. Let's say I asked you for an estimate of sine of uh, 260 degrees. It would be close to what? Well, here's say 260, there's 270. So that should be pretty close to uh, negative one, right? So you want to use uh, the graphs of these trigonometric functions to estimate values. Now there's another approach too. You can kind of construct a uh, reference triangle, but that's kind of a harder approach, but you'll also need to understand that as well. So keep in mind that there's a lot of values that um, 
you know, you'll want to kind of get familiar with and almost kind of commit to your long-term memory, uh, basic, you know, um, values of sine, like sine of zero, sine of 90 degrees, sine of 180 degrees. Let's not forget radians, right? Because 360 degrees is the same thing as what? That is two pi radians, 180 degrees is pi radians, and 90 degrees will be pi over four radians. So, you know, you're going to have to be able to work within, uh, with radians and degrees. But hopefully, I kind of made my point here, and that is you need to use the graphs of these functions, right, to kind of reality check your answers. Because what I've seen through the years, right, uh, several decades of teaching, is that students can really um, kind of prevent themselves from making mistakes. Because let's say they're um, doing some work and they type in sine 185 degrees and are actually using their calculator, and they get a value that just doesn't make any sense. Now, why would that happen, okay? In other words, here they should be kind of thinking, all right, I'm gonna be getting a slightly negative value, and they get this other crazy number. Now, why does that occur? It occurs because their calculator is in radian mode, okay? This is a very, very common mistake. So um, you're gonna be switching between radians and degrees uh, when you are uh, studying trigonometry in your calculator, okay? Now what happens is students forget to switch um, back the mode to degree modes if they're working in degrees. Very common mistake, but you can kind of prevent that if you kind of, you know, um, already expect a certain value. So you should always be kind of reality checking any value you get on your calculator, especially in trigonometry. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. If that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.